Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachah Quraish. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do a follow up video um, to a video I did yesterday responding to uh, the elder brother Karataza, Apostle Tahar, and um, the various different brothers who did videos on this topic. All right, we're living at a time where there's a lot of uh, agent activity, a lot of apostate churches being formed, you know, men who were with us. All right, and then, you know, bitterness or disagreements led them, you know, to uh, take what they learned and then pervert it and start adding this and this and that, you know, which, you know, as the scriptures tell you, that which is then is now. So we're literally witnessing what our forefathers witnessed, you know, and it's frustrating. You know, I've seen an individual brother sent out a video earlier where he's saying uh, Russia is a part of NATO. You know, a brother may go into that, but Russia is not a part of NATO, man. OK. NATO was created to actually combat. All right. Um, the presence of the USSR. All right. Now, they do have particular peace treaties that have been signed over particular years. But Russia is not a part of NATO. Russia is not a part of the beast system. Russia is going to be used in prophecy to, um, you know, head. You know, an attack against Babylon, the great, with a great company of nations. You see all of that happening now. But if the time permits, Lord willing, we'll go into that later. What I wanted to deal with here is, um, you know, the statement this young man on the left hand side made in this video uh, with this particular apostate group that, um, you know, us reading. The book of Romans 9 and 13, where it says, Jacob, have I loved Esau, have I hated? Um, you know, it has nothing to do with salvation. Um, and we're bringing that out, you know, just to uh, boast in the fact that we're the chosen, you know, which. Where is this mindset coming from? Anyway, what I wanted to do is uh, go into that scripture where Paul is actually quoting Malachi. To show you Israelites why we do bring this out. And it is important. Okay. We're not using Romans 9 and 13. We're not using Malachi where he's quoting from. As a means to um, just push hate, 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 hate. But these are some very dear and important scriptures to us as Israelites. Now we read this all the time in Romans 9 and 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. Where is that written at? Well, he's quoting the book of Malachi. OK, now let's read why this is important to us as Israelites and why we bring it out so much. It's a very, very important scripture. All right. Now, Malachi one and one, it says the burden of the word of Yahweh. All right. To Israel by Malachi, the prophet. All right. I have loved you, saith Yahweh. Yet ye say, wherein has thou loved us? All right. Now. Why, why, why is that saying that? Because even unto this day, our people, you know, look at the condition that they're in. And like in that movie, uh, that movie, uh, Boys in the Hood, you know, where they were sitting and having a philosophizing <laughs> and having a conversation, you know, about God. You know, Ice Cube asked the question, if there is a God, why does he, you know, why are we in this position you know, why, why is it all of this hate in the world? Why? And all of those answers are, are in the Holy Scriptures. And a lot of our people have pretty much turned their back on the Lord or the, the thought that a God does exist because of the hell we catch as Israelites. Right? Let's read this in the NLT. I have always loved you, says Yahweh, but you report, really? How have you loved us? All right? So when our people come in that mindset all right we have the book of malachi all right the the first chapter to jump back to all right which brings us to history which brings us to an understanding of why we're going through these things what's next why all right this this devil has been able to uh rule and reign in such a brutal fashion what's the lord's uh uh, uh mentality about it 
You, you learn prophecy. It's very important. So the Lord's reply, when Jake comes in that spirit, all right, we don't have nothing. We, we, we're constantly losing because Jake don't consider their ways. All right. But if you don't have understanding of the Holy Scriptures, that is a very good question. Why in the hell? All right. Are we catching as much hell if there is a God? That is a great question. You see, why has this devil been able to do all that he, he, he's doing if God loves us, if we're supposed to be the chosen people? So the answer that the Lord gives to this question through Malachi is, was not Esau Jacob's brother? Said Yahweh, yet I love Jacob, okay, and I hated Esau. All right. Now, why is that important to bring out? Because when you go into that story, it gives you the blessing that Jacob received and the blessing that Esau received. So through those, you can go and, and, and line up online, precept upon precept. Now you understand why the Renaissance period happened, why Esau has been able to do all that he's doing. What's next? You know, the, 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 as the scriptures say, and then shall that wicked be revealed. And then you're going to know, as a matter of fact, let's get that. Because this brings a, a lot of light to the question that uh, Jake asks, you know. And there's a lot of people, a lot of Jake, a lot of Israelites with that mindset. You know, why do we catch so much hell? Like, why are we on the bottom? Why did we go into captivity? All of these things can be answered in the Holy Scriptures. And Esau is a big part of that answer. The blessing that was given unto to Esau is very important to the answer as to why we're going through all of these things and what's next and why the Lord would even allow something as such. All right. Second Thessalonians chapter two. OK. Speaking of the man of sin that will be revealed in the latter days. OK. Whom the Lord hates. He, he created him. All right. In the grand scheme of things for a very important role in the movie as a nation of people, the Edomites. But in the movie, OK, they are the, the, the people whom the Lord has indignation for, who he set up. All right. To be utterly destroyed, the new Pharaoh in an even greater fashion. OK, so if we know our way to the kingdom of heaven is through Babylon, the great fall and who runs Babylon, the great, you're going to find out it's Esau. So when we're bringing out Jacob, have I loved Esau, have I hated that, that gives you a, a, a very, very good insight as to why we're going through these things. Okay. It's not just brought out for the purpose of hate, 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 but that scripture actually gives us Israelites a very, very high level of comfort in the grand scheme of things. Second Thessalonians two and six. All right. Now, a matter of fact, I started at three. Let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come. See, a lot of Israelites thought that after Yahweh came and ascended, that that ultimately was going to usher in the kingdom at that time. You see, but what they didn't understand is there's far more prophecies that had to be fulfilled. OK. Just like you've seen, uh, you know, at the time of one West, you know, there was a, a and it, it wasn't just Apostle Tahar's doctrine. They had the year 2000 thing. Jake thought that the Lord was going to come back. Well, that was even going on back then. And you had particular people who were depressed, who really thought, you know, since the Lord came and walked on the scene, that Rome was going to fall at that time. OK, you have many Jakes. What do you think the Zealots, the Zealots were like, man, we want the kingdom. And the, the mindset is understood however it didn't line up with prophecy okay so paul is saying let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there be a a, a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition and the falling away started you know at 70 a.d you know which led to uh pretty much on down the line in history you know, we flee, you know, into the interiors of Africa. And eventually we were brought over here to America. Okay. And there was a period where we had no understanding. You know, we went through a brutal punishment. 
You know, it was no profits. You know, so from around 1619 to around the, the 1960s, you know, the, we, we just we, we're, we're getting our asses destroyed, man, <laughs> with no understanding as to why. You see? But the Lord raised up prophets, starting with Abba Bivens. It says, that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that that man of sin should be revealed the son of perdition. Okay, the man of lawlessness. Now, in that video, these individuals, Karath Israel, which Karath means to cut. You're trying to cut cut Israel? <laughs> That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to se sever Israel, man. All right? Although a cut can go into a covenant as well, they're literally trying to cut the, 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 the truth. All right? By telling us we should go around uh, with an agenda for loving Esau. But um, it says, oh, he said that uh, in that video, he said, basically, the Lord hates sin. Well, the man of sin is who's ruling now. And the Lord clearly tells us he hates Esau. And we're going to get back to that. It says the son of perdition, he has to be revealed first. And he had to be revealed through the prophets being raised up who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped so that he said it. He, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And this is speaking of the Edomites. They're over in the Holy Land saying that they're the chosen. They have plans on actually getting inside of the temple. Who's the temple? The body, the Israelites. And we know how they want to get inside of us. All right. To say that they own and possess us, not the most high. And they're, they're doing that. Uh, that That's the plan. Anyway. And we know how that's going to happen. If you don't know, you better you better get in tune. Read Revelation, the 13th chapter. OK, John, the revelator, saw their plan. To get inside of the temple anyway. Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things. OK, in verse six. And now, ye know, what withhold it that he might be revealed in his time. See. In L in LT and now. All right. And you know what is holding him back for he can be revealed only when his time comes. So this gives you a sense of comfort. Oh, OK. So this devil ain't really going to go down. And when you it's various other prophecies and things we go into. But this devil, technically, he ain't going to go down until the heavenly father sees fit for him to go down. So we have to what? The, that's why the scriptures talks about in Revelation 13. Revelation 13, 9 and 10. And any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patient and the faith of the saints. So we're patiently waiting for the day where Esau falls. That is a big part of the faith. Because this whole chapter is dealing with the Edomites. But why do you think John the Revelator just threw this in there? Because it's talking about Esau's brutal reign, what he would do as, as Rome, the Greeks, you know, the revival of Rome through America and all of these various different things. And his payback is going to come through Babylon the Great being raised up. Why do you think it jumps directly to the America? Which is the, this other beast coming up out of the earth. The revival of Rome. That's how the biblical Edomites will be destroyed. And we will establish the throne of David in which the heathen are going to go into captivity. In specific Esau, because he is the he is the one who would be in rulership of the kingdom. OK. That's right before our kingdom. So we bring out. Uh, 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 Romans 9 and 13 is peace for us, man. Now. Let's read it again. Second Thessalonians 2. And six, and now you know what withhold it. Now you know why the Lord is allowing him to rule. When you get second entrance, the fourth chapter, by measure, hath he measured the times and numbered them. And he, he ain't going to move anything until the said measure be fulfilled. So particular rulerships had to rule for a particular time. Now, according to prophecy, we know in Job, Esau is not going to pass the bounds in which the heavenly father allowed him to rule. Remember, Isaac gave him a blessing of the fatness of the earth, the dew of heaven from above, to rule by the sword. 
and to have dominion, which when you look up the word dominion in that chapter, uh, Genesis 27, it deals with, all right, going all over the place, being a, a wonder. And that's what he is. He's he, he scattered all over the world. He's spread thin, has his nose in everybody's business, he has embassies everywhere. Rape, robbing and murder, doing evil. Now, if there's a God, why would he allow that? Well, prophecy, it's his story. It's his word. It's his movie. You don't go into ask the, the, the writer of, uh, you know, New Jack City, why Nino Brown had to fall and get shot at the end of the movie. Right. Well, with any movie. Well, this is a, a this is the true movie. <laughs> He's showing you how to really do it with real players. You see, and Esau was chosen to be the wicked. Now, for the mystery of a, of iniquity doth already work. Only he who will now will let it will let until he be taken out of the way. So the Lord is going to allow him to rule until he's taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed through the prophets, all right, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. These particular people who rule this world, who rule this beast system, the Edomites, they are here specifically to do the bidding of Satan for the sake of prophecy. Okay, do you love Satan? Now, Satan is, is perfect within his order and balance. The Lord is, is uh, uh, the, the scriptures say if the Lord is a, a false balance is an abomination. You can't just have all love. There has to be hate. You can't just have all good. There has to be bad. In order for the, the good of cold to be established, you have to have hot. In order for the good of hot to be established, you have to have cold. So Esau is perfect in his order, but his order is to be hated and to be destroyed. Now, Let's go back here to Malachi, where, where Paul was quoting from. Okay, Malachi. All right, so the Lord shows his love for Israel through what? He, the fact that he chose Jacob and gave him the blessing of the kingdom of heaven in the fatness of the earth in an eternal kingdom. At the time, Isaac had Jacob and Esau who received the blessing. All right of the kingdom of heaven in 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 uh lordship and rulership Jacob so when you go back to that story it it should comfort you to know dang we are chosen okay the lord does love us okay he gave us a blessing okay he also gave Esau a blessing what's Esau's blessing oh this is this is why he's ruling right now. This is why he's uh, uh, acting so crazy because his kingdom is getting ready to fall. This is why it gives you comfort. It gives you answers. It's above just Esau, Jacob, have I love and Esau, have I hated. It. It's above that. But when you go into it, the, the, the reason Malachi is bringing this out and the reason Paul is quoting that is because it's a promise tied to that for us. And you're going to tell us we're wicked for bringing that out and it has nothing to do with salvation. And see, some man, a lot of you, I, I pray sinkholes start forming where some of you are doing your camps and you're going live and a sinkhole just swallows your ass up, man. I praise the Lord and burn Palo Santo, man. And these are the types of judgments that's coming to rebellious jakes. So you better prepare your mind and you, you better damn sure not have any emotion towards them, man. Because the, 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 the warning went out. These dudes are willingly be, being rebellious. It's stupid. Malachi 1 and 2. I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Why, how, why, how does a God love us? And look, look at what he did, the ghettos and this and that. And those are valid thoughts. Those are valid questions that can be answered through the Holy Scriptures and with comfort, man. That comes with comfort. Gives you what? A, a different mindset. Patience. What do you think is happening with these jakes in the world who are losing their mind, putting their women to death, going and in, in, uh, doing all of this wickedness? And, 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 and I understand the anger, right? But you're not justified in taking your own vengeance. 
That's why you have to understand prophecy, who you are, who Esau is, how the Lord feels about Esau. It gives you a sense of comfort to where you're able to smile and operate and be like, hey, how you doing, Mr. White Man? Have a good day. You open the door for him, but you know in the back of your head, hey, you devils are getting ready to fall. You know the games they're trying to play when they talk to you because de all devils do is sit and try to play mind games when they have conversations with you. Everything is always an undermining. It all goes back to how we were in the belly with them wrestling, fighting. Now you see why you feel so weird around these people. Now you see how they operate. Now you get it, why they, 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 they do all that they can to destroy you. You get it now, and they haven't been able to destroy us. Was not Esau Jacob's brother, said the Lord, yet I love Jacob, okay? And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. And this is speaking of what's coming here to Babylon the Great. Prove, let's prove it, okay? What's, what's the future of Babylon the Great? Because this is his heritage. It, and it was gotten by ill-gotten gain. It was stolen. It was, it was gotten by wickedness, man. Isaiah 13. And 19 in Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees excellence shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. This did not happen to ancient Babylon. OK, this is a future Babylon. It shall never be inhabited. And where, where is the, the physical Babylon, the, the actual physical Babylon located in the area of Iraq? Aren't people still dwelling there? In the region of Sumeria and all of that? Assyria? People are dwelling there. This is speaking of a spiritual Babylon, the great, which will be ruled by the Edomites in the end time prophecy. It shall never be inhabited. Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there. All of these Arabs over here making money. Neither shall the shepherds uh, make their fold there. Because this is a, you know... This is a consumer nation. But the wild beast of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures. Owls, satire shall dance there, and the wild beasts of the islands shall cry in their desolate houses, and the dragons in their pleasant places. And her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. Proof this ain't happened yet. Okay? So... I hated Esau and laid his mountains in his waste in his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Okay, it's gonna be utterly destroyed. Whereas Edom saith we are impoverished. This is all going into prophecy and things that will come. Okay. Rome the, the Esau fell for a period of time. The Western Roman Empire. They were impoverished, cavemen, right? But we will return and build the desolate places, which is the Renaissance. And what was the Renaissance centered around? The rebirth of Rome. And America is the, is, 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 is the finishing of that, along with the NATO and the EU. The EU is literally the ancient Roman Empire. Look at the map of the EU and look at the map of uh, uh, ancient Rome. It's the same thing. It's rebirth now with, with, with America, uh, 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 NATO. Canada is now uh, in Canada as well, part of NATO. And you have the EU. That's the beast system. So they have rebuilt. They have returned and rebuilt. Let's look at the word return. <laughs> they said we will return. All right, the deadly wound was healed. Return. Shawab. To return, to go back. To turn back. To bring back. Now, what is the Renaissance? Let's look this up real quick. I got to roll out. <laughs> America leads the world in drug overdoses. Oh, wow. Hold up. Let's lock it. What is the Renaissance? The Renaissance is a period in European history marking the transition from the Middle Ages, yada, yada, yada. Renaissance definition. That's a, yeah, let me look that up.
a rebirth, a revival of classic art, what, going back to Rome. They brought back Rome. Western Rome fell for a period of a thousand years. After that, the deadly wound was healed. And what did they do? They rebuilt it. And we're in the end of that rebuilding. Whereas Edom said we are impoverished, they were cavemen. But we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, they shall build, but I will throw down and they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. He, he hates them forever. Right? So when we bring out Malachi, we bring out Romans 9, that is dear unto us. That should be dear to any Israelite. Why are you running from it? To hell with these people say. And what does the book of Psalms say about the wicked? Word to the uh, elder brother, Yar Zion. I was talking to the brother earlier, and he gave me the scripture, and that helped me come to the conclusion, I'm going to do this lesson. <laughs> Psalms 119 and 155. Okay, let's get it. Psalms 119 and 155. Salvation is far from the wicked. For they seek not thy statutes. Remember, he is the man of sin, man. So I just wanted to go into that, man. You know, hopefully I'll edify. Salvation is far from the wicked, man. Esau, Edom is through. All right, there's no love for him. This was the love. The, see, you're not happy enough that the Lord, okay, he, 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 he blessed Esau. That's not enough for you. He blessed him. Look at what he gave Esau. Come on now, this is a this is a lot. The power he has. But within the story, the end of that is his destruction and our upliftment. So God, you goddamn right. Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. We gonna keep bringing it out, nigga. Shalom.